I'm Maya. I'm the Senior Director for Enterprise at GitHub. Today, I'm going to talk about some best practices for securing GitHub Enterprise in the cloud. Whether you're on GitHub Enterprise Cloud or deploying Enterprise Server into the cloud, we're building the tools you need to unlock that cloud migration. I'm going to go through three best practices today. Centralizing access control with zero trust-based policies, adopting least privilege for both your users and integrations, and detecting threats in real time. So let's jump in. Our first best practice is all about making sure that the right people have access. So let's jump in. Our first best practice is all about making sure that the right people have access to the right things from the right places. Right. That was three rights. So I guess the right makes the left, right? To do that, we help you centralize access control into the industry's leading identity providers and use them to adopt zero trust policies too. Because we know that our customers want to achieve a few things. Giving and revoking access quickly without changing multiple systems. Single sign-in everywhere with one identity everywhere. Keeping your private code private and unlocking the cloud and flexible work with safe conditional access policies. GitHub provides a whole host of ways you can achieve these goals. For those looking to move to the cloud from self-hosted solutions, increasingly, the easiest way to do so is with enterprise managed users. Enterprise managed users are GitHub accounts that you create from your identity provider just for work. They move ever increasing levels of control to your identity provider and keep all of your code private, even on github.com. Launched last year, today almost a thousand companies have adopted these new accounts. Companies like Home Depot, who were previously using server, who say, GitHub Enterprise Cloud with enterprise managed users has helped our team's productivity and helps them focus on building solutions for our customers and associates. Now, let's talk about conditional access policies. Because as you move to the cloud and teams are increasingly working from anywhere on any device, you can't rely on network security boundaries anymore. Instead, we need to make real-time access decisions based on who a user is, their device, and their location. Once you have single sign-on enabled with GitHub, your identity provider will enforce those policies at sign-in. But with GitHub, you do also need to control remote Git access. Let me grab my laptop. All right, so one option for doing this is to use GitHub's IP allow list feature. You can find it under the authentication security section of your enterprise account. It ensures that only people who can access your orgs are allowed to access them from allowed IP addresses. Oh, and you know, while we're here, quick reminder to enforce two-factor authentication across your enterprise too, even if you use single sign-on. 2FA protects all of your users' accounts, so they're much less susceptible to social engineering attacks and we're going to be requiring all GitHub contributors to use 2FA next year as we try to keep you and the whole software ecosystem secure. But if you have thousands of IP addresses you need to manage or different rules to apply to different users, you might want to centralize those IP restrictions to your identity provider too. Customers using enterprise managed users with Azure Active Directory can do so. And in fact, setting that up in GitHub is almost a one-click process. It's based on using OpenID Connect to connect GitHub to Azure AD. That means you don't have to copy and paste SAML credentials around the place anymore. I'm gonna do that, just download my recovery code so I can always sign in at any time in case of problems. And there you go, with one click, I have single sign-on enforced across my enterprise. If I just hop over to the Azure AD app gallery, you can see that OIDC app, I can assign users and groups to it, provision accounts with Skim, and apply those conditional access policies, like this one, which is gonna block access for Brits for my enterprise. Sorry, fam. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Our next best practice is about enforcing the principle of least privilege. That's giving everyone just the permissions they need to do their job. We're constantly working on an ongoing basis to bring you all of the fine-grained controls that you need to achieve that. For example, at Universe last year, we launched custom repository roles, which are now also available on GHES. Those are user roles that you create from fine-grained permissions to give your teams just the permissions they need. 
like say giving your DevOps team the ability to override branch protection policies during incidents without having to make them repository admins. But attackers do often attack apps and personal access tokens to extract sensitive information. That's why we recommend applying those same principles of least privilege to programmatic access too. For apps, that means using GitHub apps instead of OAuth apps wherever possible. But for personal access tokens, it hasn't really been possible to finally control and target access until now. Now, with our new fine-grained personal access tokens, you can do just that. I think I'll take over the demo from here. Available now in a beta, these new pets can be set to expire, targeted to specific organizations or to my own account, and targeted even at specific repositories, and then given the fine-grained permissions you need. I'm going to give this one the ability to access my repositories, have discussions, and down here, I'll also give it the ability to, you know, manage my custom repository roles. Just like with GitHub Apps, administrators can control access of these new paths to their orgs, putting control in the hands of those who should really have it, admins. Here, I'm in my platform organization settings. And you can see we have a few policies here, including a choice of uh, whether I want to approve any path access request. If I choose to, I can go in and see any pending request at any time. And you can see I have a few here from my members. I can see when they were raised, when they'll expire, the reason they want access and exactly what they want access to. I can go in, approve them, approve them all together. And as well as a UI for this, we'll be shipping some APIs soon. Finally, you'll have full visibility over which personal access tokens have access to your org at all times, and the ability to revoke them, again, in bulk, or just one by one, if you just don't trust those people. Yeah, I get rid of them. I never trusted them anyhow. So with our dev teams now beavering away, let's move on to our final hot tip, listening for threats, in real time with a GitHub audit log. GitHub security, trust, and safety teams are doing their best every day to identify and disrupt potential threats to our ecosystem, you, our customers, and our platform. We've got a demonstrated track record of using our visibility to help you, our customers, respond to threats and protect yourselves. But there's only so much we can do without context about how your company operates and what represents normal for you. We also can't protect all of your systems. To better protect yourselves then, you can utilize the audit log to ingest, monitor, alert on, and investigate any unusual activity. For last year, we announced the release of audit log streaming, which is now available in server too. It's the best way to push all of your audit log events to your preferred event management tools and cloud storage services in real time. It means you'll never, ever lose an audit log event again, and you can store that data for as long as you need to. You can also set up streaming to cloud storage accounts using OpenID Connect short-lived tokens. With OpenID Connect, you don't need to save hard-coded, long-lived secrets in GitHub to push data to your cloud accounts anymore. Instead, GitHub will just request a short-lived, regularly rotated access token from your cloud provider, and you have full control of that and visibility over those from that storage account. GitHub Actions support OpenID Connect too, so every workflow can be run with a unique, short-lived token. I mentioned earlier that attackers often work through stolen paths or hijacked apps to access repository data and secrets. As a result, we've recently enhanced the GitHub audit log events with PAT and app token data so you can fully trace their usage throughout your organizations. Let's have a look. Events generated with one of those tokens now contain a hashed version alongside the token type. So if I suspect a token has been compromised, I can find everything that has been done with it. All of this data is now available in your stream too. And here's an example with Datadog. It's one of our newest additions for streaming. This is an OAuth app that I have managing my repository configuration. There you can see that token, the scopes it has, the permissions it has, and who owns it. And all of our Git Activity 2 now also has that token so I can see not only who is accessing my code, but how they're doing so. And I've got the user's IP address 
so you can track how well those zero trust policies are working for your business. You can pop in and enable that IP address tracking through your enterprise account here at any time. So there we have it. Three best practices for securing GitHub in the cloud with some of our latest additions. Centralizing access control and zero trust policies. Enforcing least privilege everywhere, especially for pets and apps. And listening up for threats in real time with the ever more powerful audit log. We also look today at how OpenID Connect is increasingly becoming a recommended standard for connecting GitHub securely to your other cloud services, whether for your audit log or for your actions builds. And that's it from me, from us. Thanks and stay secure. Goodbye.